so now we are going to study about the ninth cranial nerve which is the glossopharyngeal nerve so glossopharyngeal nerve is basically a mixed nerve that means it will have the both the efferent fibers that will be the motor fibers and the sensory fibers so i have tried to make a diagram and i hope you will understand it we will learn it step by step so that you will understand it really easily as there are three kind of fibers present in the glossopharyngeal nerve so first of all we will see about here the efferent that is secretory fibers so as you can see this will be the pons area and this is the medulla oblongata so the all the nucleus of the glossopharyngeal nerve will be present in the medulla oblongata region so these efferent secretory fibers efferent secretory fibers these dotted lines this will run from inferior salivary nucleus that is the first nucleus present in the glossopharyngeal nerve inferior salivary nucleus so from the inferior salivary nucleus these efferent secretory fibers will run along the glossopharyngeal nerve and will move towards the tympanic nerve as it is separated here tympanic nerve and will go to the otic ganglion where they will innervate the parotid gland so this is about the efferent secretory fibers efferent secretory fibers they will start from the inferior salivary nucleus that is the first nucleus of the glossopharyngeal nerve they will leave the um, brain cavity through the um, jugular uh, foramen and they will go along with the tympanic nerve and up to the otic ganglion and then will innervate the parotid glands so these will be the first efferent secretory fibers that arises from the inferior salivary nucleus second we will see here efferent motor fibers so efferent motor fibers as it is here the nucleus ambiguus this is the second nucleus the nucleus ambiguus so the efferent motor fibers will start from the nucleus ambiguus and will run along the glossopharyngeal nerve and these will innervate a muscle known as stylopharyngeus muscles of the pharynx stylopharyngeus muscle of the pharynx so these fibers will run along the glossopharyngeal nerve and here as you can see the red portion the efferent motor and they will innervate this muscle it is the stylopharyngeus muscle now about the third type of fibers that are the efferent sensory fibers so the efferent sensory fibers will are the fibers that run from the pharynx part pharynx and tympanic cavity tympanic cavity posterior tongue that is posterior one third part of the tongue and all these fibers as you can see in the purple color they will run these are the efferent sensory fibers and these will run along the length of the glossopharyngeal nerve and will ends at the solitary tract nucleus in the medulla oblongata which is the third nucleus so now i have described all the three fibers first is efferent secretory fibers which arises from the inferior salivary nucleus and will go and innervate the parotid gland second is the efferent motor fibers that arises from the nucleus ambiguus and they will innervate the stylopharyngeus muscle in the pharynx and third will be the sensory fibers which will um, come from these parts or these organs like pharynx tympanic cavity tonsil palate arches and tongue posterior one third part here so they will come and ends at solitary tract nucleus which is the third nucleus of the glossopharyngeal nerve so now we have learned about the all the three nucleus which are present in the medulla oblongata and these three nucleus are very important in the glossopharyngeal nerve uh, pathway and also the three fibers the ef efferent secretory fibers efferent motor fibers and afferent sensory fibers so now let us have a look at the detailed pathway of the glossopharyngeal nerve so these three nucleus 
will be present in the medulla oblongata from here the glossopharyngeal nerve will arise in the brain and it will form a superior and inferior ganglion as you can see this structure superior and inferior ganglion so superior ganglion will be formed just before entering the jugular foramen just before entering the jugular foramen it will form a superior ganglion and just after the exiting from the jugular foramen it will form a inferior ganglion so from here from the inferior ganglion will arise a branch it is known as tympanic nerve it is one of the most important branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve and it will go up to the otic ganglion as lesser petrosal nerve lesser petrosal nerve the structure here is lesser petrosal nerve so will go up to the otic ganglion and from there it will help the secretory fibers to innervate the parotid gland as they are running through the tympanic nerve so this is the one path the second the other glossopharyngeal nerve or the other branch of glossopharyngeal nerve goes downwards and will carry the efferent motor fibers efferent motor fibers to the stylopharyngeus muscle stylopharyngeus muscle in the pharynx and also it will carries or the fibers which are running from the pharynx tympanic cavity tonsil palatal arches or the posterior one third of the tongue it will carry all these sensory fibers to the solitary tract nucleus present in the medulla oblongata so this is the uh, detailed diagram and you can compare this diagram to the natter's page 124 diagram as we have already learned about the three type of fibers in the earlier diagram and this will be efferent sensory that the fiber running from the pharynx tympanic cavity tonsil palatal arches and tongue posterior one third part the efferent motor that will be innervating muscles of pharynx that is stylopharyngeus muscle and the efferent secretory that will go and innervate the parotid gland so now we will learn about the branches of the glossopharyngeal nerve so first of all the main branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve as i already described here it is the tympanic nerve so here is the detail of the tympanic nerve you can see here the tympanic nerve it arises at the inferior ganglion now we will learn it through the flow chart it is a part or branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve formed at the inferior ganglion here it arises and separates from the main glossopharyngeal nerve so it will penetrates the tympanic cavity and form tympanic plexus as here you can see it is forming the tympanic plexus and this tympanic plexus this tympanic plexus will receive branches from the sympathetic plexus of internal carotid artery this will be the internal carotid artery and it will receive branches from the sympathetic plexus of internal carotid artery and it innervates mucous membrane of tympanic cavity and auditory tube let's revise it again that after leaving the main glossopharyngeal nerve as a tympanic nerve it will penetrates the tympanic cavity here and it will form a tympanic plexus so this plexus will receive branches from the sympathetic plexus of the internal carotid artery and it will innervate mucous membrane of tympanic cavity and the auditory tube so this plexus will innervate mucous membrane of the tympanic cavity and the auditory tube it will leaves the tympanic cavity as lesser petrosal nerve as you can see here it will leave the tympanic cavity as lesser petrosal nerve so after that it will reach the otic ganglion this lesser petrosal nerve will reach the otic ganglion and through this nerve otic ganglion receives parasympathetic fibers or 
secretory fibers coming from inferior salivary nucleus as we have seen here inferior salivary nucleus these parasympathetic fibers will be received with the help of only this lesser petrosal nerve which is a part of tympanic nerve so it will receive parasympathetic fiber coming from inferior salivary nucleus these parasympathetic fibers will join with the fibers coming from the oricotemporal nerve oricotemporal nerve is a branch of the trigeminal nerve so it will joins the fiber here this is the oricotemporal nerve it will joins the fiber with the parasympathetic fibers that are coming from the inferior salivary nucleus and then it will goes to the parotid gland so this is the pathway of the tympanic nerve the second will be the branch to the stylopharynges that will be the branch which provide innervation to the stylopharynges muscle so this will be the second nerve third will be the tonsillar branches that will uh, provide innervation or give innervation to the mucus of the tonsil pharyngeal branches and lingual branches lingual branches mainly to the posterior one third of the tongue so these are the main nerves of the glossopharyngeal nerve first will be the tympanic nerve as i have already mentioned it earlier second will be the branches to the stylopharynges third will be the tonsillar fourth will be the pharyngeal fifth will be the lingual branches we will try to learn it through a flow chart so glossopharyngeal nerve has three nucleus we have already mentioned it earlier solitary tract nucleus nucleus ambiguus and inferior salivary nucleus solitary tract nucleus will receive all the mm, sensory innervations nucleus ambiguus will send motor fibers to innervate the stylopharyngeal muscle and inferior salivary nucleus will send the secretory fibers through the tympanic nerve to innervate the parotid gland so it basically originates behind the olives in the medulla oblongata this glossopharyngeal nerve will originate behind the olives in the medulla oblongata leaves the cranial cavity with the vagus nerve from the jugular foramen as you can see it see it here via jugular foramen it is leaving the cranial cavity so form superior and inferior ganglion before leaving and after leaving as i have already mentioned it earlier before leaving the jugular foramen it will form a superior ganglion and after leaving it will form an inferior ganglion from inferior ganglion one nerve will arise that is tympanic nerve as we have learned its detailed anatomy here the pathway and the innervation of the tympanic nerve and second other part of the nerve that descends between the internal jugular vein and internal carotid artery goes to the pharynx and innervates muscle stylopharyngeus and other branches that innervates root of the tongue tonsillar region lingual region and by giving different branches to the glossopharyngeal part of the mouth like the posterior one third of the tongue or the palatal tonsil part or the pharyngeal branches or the lingual branches so that's it for the glossopharyngeal nerve